You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast with Melissa Klug and Jen Obermeyer. Thank you so much for joining in. Our mission is to broaden the horizons of savvy business women in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. You'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. So now, let's get started. Hey, Pro Organizers, it's Melissa here, and I hope that you are having a great start to your week. Whether you are having an admin week, whether it is a week that you have full of clients, or if you are just dreaming and thinking about the business that you want to own and build someday, you are all welcome here. We are thrilled to have anyone, no matter where you are in your organizing business, with us today on the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. Today, we are excited because Jen and I get to be on the pod together again, which is always so fun. And we are bringing you an interview that we did with our fellow organizer extraordinaire, Lori Palau of This Organized Life podcast. Lori is a colleague, a friend, and a great example of collaboration over competition, which is one of our favorite things about this industry. She is awesome. She has written a book. She has done so many great things. She just had the 300th episode of her podcast, which I can tell you that is a lot of work. And so it's awesome that there are 300 episodes of her podcast out in the world. But we wanted to bring you this interview that Lori did with Jen and myself and This podcast is covering a lot of bases, so we're going to do this in two parts, with the second part dropping later this week. We are covering a lot of topics, and you'll hear all of them, but we talk about our philosophies on working with clients, how our personality types work for and sometimes against us in the work that we do, and lots of other things. I won't spoil it, but the reason that I really love this podcast and why I wanted to bring it to you is because I really love when we are able to show you a little more about who we are and want to make sure that you know that you are not alone in this industry or any way you are feeling about life, whether it's entrepreneurship, anything about your business. Sometimes I think there's this idea that we're on a podcast, therefore we must have everything figured out. And I'm here to tell you that we all have challenges. We all have things that we have to conquer and overcome every day. And I am happy if you know that wherever you are on your journey and wherever that journey is going to take you, we are here to support you. Before we get started, this is just a heads up, our free workshop, the Pro Organizer's Profit Plan is going to be closing soon, and I would love to have you join us. If you have not seen that yet, you can catch it at poroadmap.com. We would love to spend an hour with you for this workshop and just head right over there to poroadmap.com. All right, let's get started with part one with Laurie Palau. But I am very excited for this episode. I have been waiting to have these two guests on for the longest time. So as you may know, we are doing a series of Enneagram and Clutter. And I've been, if you're new to our show and you're not familiar with the stuff that we've been doing, the Enneagram's a personality framework that looks at your motivation versus your behavior. And I had spent the past several years working on connecting the dots between the intersection of what your personality type is and how it relates to clutter. And it's been a really fun project for myself and extremely helpful for my clients, my fellow professional organizers. And I'd done a series a while back on it when I had first started scratching the surface in this area, but I wanted to do it again because it was so popular the first time. And so you are in for a treat because my guests today are like a dynamic duo. And for my fellow professional organizers, you will know them as the creators and leaders of Pro Organizer Studio. My friend Jen Kilborn created the Inspired Organizer digital course and has since grown into this incredible online community that she co-runs with Melissa Klug, who is an amazing, amazing talent in her own right. And I love these women because they are leaders in the industry. They empower other women. They help people live simply, work smarter. And I think it's a great example. And we've said this before, we've been on each other's shows that you can have several people in the same industry and really play nice in the sandbox. And so these women are 
colleagues of mine. I look up to them. I look to them for advice. And so when I asked them both if they would be guests on my show to talk about their own Enneagram types, they jumped at the chance. So I'm really, really excited for this conversation. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome my two dear friends, Melissa Klug and Jen Kilborn to the show. Welcome ladies. Thank you. I love talking about this. I'm so excited. (laughs) All right. So I just gave our listeners some backstory and obviously you guys can fill in the blanks along the way. If you guys could just, for those who might not be familiar with Pro Organizer Studio or the work that you do, can you just, each of you tell, what are you, what are you poking at? I'm pointing at Melissa. Oh, I was like, I'm going to let her do our official intro. Okay. So, and I will let everyone know. So, and you'll be able to quickly, if you're listening to the podcast, you'll be able to tell because Jen has a nice little Southern twang because she's, oh, yeah. she's a South Carolina <laughs> girl and Melissa's a Midwesterner. So you'll be able to have a distinction in their, in their vocal tones, but just tell our listeners a little bit about what you guys do collectively. And then a little bit about each one of you from the personal side of things, Melissa, I'll let you kick it off. Yes. I just have the newscaster, the blank newscaster voice that doesn't really have any accent. So <laughs> you'll, you'll know it's Gosh, me. That's oh. so funny. Jen started Pro Organizer Studio back in 2016, and it has grown into this absolutely amazing community of women. I have a corporate background. And so I've talked a lot about, you know, I came from industries that were mostly men. And so it's been so fun to me to now work in an industry that is mostly women. And that's important to me because Jen started this organization that really helps women figure out that there is an amazing career path out there for them. And professional organizing is an absolutely wonderful career path to help people. Enneagram two here. We're going to talk about this a lot, but helping people is what I do. And so we have created this community that gives education and inspiration to women who want to start and grow professional organizing businesses. We've got some digital courses. We've got a podcast. We have this wonderful set of resources for women to realize they can go be professional organizers and start their own businesses and be entrepreneurs and do something different. Before I hop over to Jen, I just want to say, because People that have listened to my show know, well, wait a second, you have this SBO partner program and you talk about what you do. And I want to just say for anybody out there, our businesses complement each other. They don't compete with each other. We have members, both of the SBO partner program that are also members of Pro Pro Organizer Studio, vice versa. At the end of the day, our core foundation is wanting to help other people, women specifically, help them succeed make, follow their own path. And ultimately none of us like clutter in this group. And we want to help people find organizing strategies and give knowledge to other women who want to then teach that to their clients. And that's actually one of the reasons that Jen brought me on too, was I started working with her in late 2020. And I am extremely passionate about organizing as a business, which is what we do at Pro Organizer Studio, but I still have active clients. I was at a client yesterday. I still actively help people organize. And that is, it's my passion to teach people how to be better organizers too. Not just the business piece, but also how do you actually go into someone's house and help them with all of this clutter that they are dealing with? So absolutely. All right, Miss Jen. I that love was a fant- <laughs> you're, you're so sweet, Laurie. That was a fantastic intro. You know, it really goes without saying that after it's been six years, seven years coming on. I mean, gosh, I've lost track of the years. Pro Organizer Studio started as a thought in my mind, and now it has become a thing with its own momentum that started to grow to the point where I needed somebody like Melissa who had a different skill set different personality type. Like Laurie said, our businesses all complement each other really well. And we do have different ways of approaching the same problems because of our personality types. I connected with Laurie. I mean, really now it's been a while early on when we first started podcasting with Pro Organizer Studio, I definitely reached out to her because she was well-established and she knew what she was doing. And she was already talking to this audience in some way. I mean, I absolutely love you, Laurie, like as a friend and as a person, but you know, I never thought of it as, you know, 
competition. And that's so like part of your platform is collaboration over competition. So I just really appreciate you. And yes, I really appreciate Melissa too. We could, we could dive into the, the history of everything that everything that we have going on, but really Melissa is that person who I knew when people were asking for like, Hey, teach me how to organize other people. I was like, you know what? I want to make people feel confident and feel proud and feel ready to go out there, but I wasn't that right person. And Melissa, her addition to what we offer and being a host of our podcast has been the best thing that has ever really happened for our community and for its growth. You bring up an interesting point and we're going to, we're going to really start to dive into the Enneagram in a minute, but what you just said is really a product of your Enneagram type understanding that. Mm -hmm. I have spoken at length with both Melissa and Jen about their Enneagram types and about what the work that I do, just to specifically for anybody that's listening. So Jen's an Enneagram three and Enneagram threes, they're achievers, they're big picture people, the devil's in the details. And that's not always the strength for an Enneagram three. I don't want to speak for her, her. but I'm married to a three. (laughs) She knows that Josh is a three. And so there's some amazing qualities. You're visionaries. Threes are visionaries. And That is amazing, but you need people on your team, wherever you are Mm -hmm. personally, professionally, that are going to balance that and counteract that because in order to achieve those visions, you need those people that are going to be able to dot the I's, cross the T's, work in the sit with the people that need to be sat with because the three is like, I'm already on to the next, which is (laughs) not a bad thing. It's just how you're wired. And so I think it's interesting you knew where your strengths and where you weren't as strong and identified, Mm -hmm. Hey, I need somebody that's going to fill this void that we have, because we know that this is important and I'm not the woman for the job. So, right. But I also need a three to balance me (laughs) because I can be very much like, Oh, you have a problem. Great. I'm ready to solve it. Just like vanilla eyes, I guess. But like, I, I need that three to be like, here's the bigger picture and here is the vision. And this is what we're going toward. And so it's a nice balance. So on that note, Melissa, since you're an Enneagram two, why don't you, in your words, just give a top line overview, how you describe a two and what that looks like in your mind and just to give our people that are not Enneagram savvy some insight. So the best description of an Enneagram two that I have found, I found on my very beloved platform, TikTok, there (laughs) there is some really good Enneagram content on TikTok that I get served up on my FYP. And I got this TikTok one day that said Enneagram two gets kidnapped. And it was a woman who was like, Hey, kidnapper, we've been in the car for a long time. Are you hungry? I have a granola bar in my bag. Like, are, do you need to take a rest? I know this is probably very stressful for you. And so that I saw that and I go, I feel seen and heard by this <laughs> because Enneagram to, to me and the way it manifests for me is I am a helper and I am a giver. That's why I love the work that I do here. And that's why I love organizing because I love that feeling of going into someone's home. And at the beginning of the day yesterday, we had chaos. And at the end of the day, we had calm. And I love that feeling of giving that gift to someone else. And I love the feeling of giving the gift of starting a business to someone. But the downside of being a two sometimes is you give so much that it takes a lot away from you as well. So you have to really check those boundaries of like, I'm always giving. And so when is the time for me to decompress or to not feel resentful about all the giving to, I know that's kind of a deep one that we can get into. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll unpack it in a minute. Cause I, I obviously have follow-up questions, but Jen, I referenced obviously that you're an Enneagram three. Mm-hmm. Do you want to just in your own words, describe what a three means to you, Jen, or how it looks like in your world? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so first of all, Laurie gave me this question in advance and I declined to do my homework properly enough because I figured I could just show it up wasn't and say homework. something. Homework. It's not, I told you this is not a quiz. You're not passing, failing. It's but listen, conversation. listen, every, I mean, but that is kind of what a three is about. It's like, 
I'm going to roll in and listen to what you guys are saying and play off of it and hope that what I say makes sense. I'm going to try to do my threes out there proud. I'm not as, I'm not as in-depth, certainly. I mean, Laurie, I consider you like an expert in the Enneagram in my life. So with that being said, and, and the fact that I haven't studied it as much as you, because I really love like personality tests and everything. And this, and what I understand about the Enneagram that's different is that the number types are not so much a personality descriptor, but that it kind of gets at your core motivations and values and how you show up for things. So my understanding of a three is that, yes, I like what you said, Laurie, about being a visionary. That makes a lot of sense. The motivation to perform in a sense, and maybe you can actually help me elaborate yeah. on that, Laurie, because it's not that I'm motivated to perform in all situations, but like Melissa said, I like to be that big picture person, help people reframe a big problem. But when it comes down to details and being the chaperone of the field trip, that is not my strong suit because when people individually start ne needing things and asking for help, I like to really just sort of be the one who's helping guide the whole expedition. Yeah. So, so when I think of performer, I don't think so much of the need for attention necessarily because I actually really prefer to be behind the scenes, but I don't mind being the person who's like speaking on behalf or being willing to say some things that other people aren't willing to say. I think I have that sort of natural sort of confidence. And so I think if I can continue using that to, to like, for example, hosting a podcast ended up being a perfect medium for me that I would not have known was such a good fit for my personality type. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'll, I'll get a little bit more of the technical academic just yeah. to kind of fill in the gaps. But I think the best way, the best description comes from somebody that is that type. So I'll just kind of top line on both of the types. So for our Enneagram mm -hmm. twos, they are known as the helper and their core motivation in a nutshell is that their worth is tied to service of others. So they're need, it's not that it's not genuine. Everything is genuine, but there's like an intrinsic need that I need to help you because that's part of why I'm here. This is part of why you like me. This is my purpose. I am here to help you. And again, there's a little bit of every Enneagram type in all of us. So it's just a matter of mm. what's dominant for you. And when you look at the model of the Enneagram, it's this circle with the triangle and all these crazy arrows, almost like, what is this? And when you start to understand it, when you peel back the layers beyond just the number, you look at, oh, those arrows represent how the connection points are. So that even though your core number is a to the helper, you have connection points to all of these other types. So it's a fluid process, but your intrinsic core motivation is that need to help others. Where Jen's as the three is the need for achievement and the need to, like you mm -hmm. said, perform. It is not an inauthentic thing because I've studied all the types and I'm married to a three and I've <laughs> learned a lot over the past several years of, oh, that's why he did that. And so the three, their worth is tied to their work, how well I show up in the world. Like my purpose is to bring value on a grander scale. And this is not from an egotistical standpoint. This is not necessarily, yeah, sure. If any number is unhealthy, they're going to do that. If a two is unhealthy and they're going to be a martyr and a three is going to be inauthentic, but most people are in that kind of average range where you're just going through life, doing your thing. And the threes, Jen's like, I had this idea for pro organizer studio, and I'm going to figure out how I can share that with the world. And that's just a gift. And where certain types on the Enneagram, like our ones who are perfectionists, my, our ones and our fives, would do like tons of research and make sure every I is dotted, T's crossed. They had every single thing is air quote, perfect before they put that out in the world. Jen's like, I'm just going to put it out in the world and see how people respond to it. And then we'll go from there, which is in some ways very similar to my type as an eight. For a three, it's like, I have an idea. I think this can bring value. Let's just go. And people are drawn to threes. They're charismatic people. And threes have the innate ability to read a room. That's why a lot of threes are leaders, they're CEOs, they're heads of whether it's a head of a department or industry or a business, because they aren't afraid to take risks. They are comfortable maybe stepping out of their comfort zone and speaking up. So I think that's what's great about it. But I want to talk about 
the clutter perspective. So let's go back in time and talk about growing up. When you were a child, Melissa, how would you say clutter and organization confessed itself in your life? I could talk about this. This could probably be your own like single focus podcast, a okay. deep psychology of my background. I have a theory about people that I work with uh, organizing clients. And I believe that you either do exactly what you grew up with, or you do 180 degrees opposite. That's my general going in strategy. And so uh, in my house, I grew up with a mom who was exceedingly organized. Everything was at right angles. There is nothing in my mom's house that she could not tell you immediately where it was. When my husband first went to my parents' house, he said, and this is accurate, I would eat a steak off of your mom's garage floor. Okay. <laughs> very clean and organized home. I rebelled against that very severely. <laughs> so as a teenager, I had a room that you would like break your leg when you walked into stuff everywhere. When I went to college, I had a messy dorm room. I had messy apartments. I then as an adult said, I'm taking this organization and I, I'm doing my own thing. And so it wasn't until I was 42 years old that I realized this is not an enjoyable way to live actually, <laughs> and totally reformed and became organized myself and then started my organizing business to help other people who were like me, who had no idea how to do it. So that the brief synopsis of, I grew up with very, very organized home. And it wasn't until I was into my middle of my adulthood that I realized that was actually a great way to live. But I also did not go to the level of like, my home is not at the right angles, right? I enjoy having things around me. I do not live in a minimalist home, as you can probably see behind me, but I do realize the value of my brain being calmer with an organized home, being able to find what I need. I have realized that and then I love to be able to help other people get there too. That's perfect. Couldn't have, that's like perfect description. Jen, let's talk um, about okay. you. So let's see. I wouldn't say there was anything that I was like heavily rebelling against. Although I think I've just always been very sensitive to my environment. I mean, I, I know that for sure now, but I, as a child, I was probably experiencing some of those things and not really even knowing why I know when I went into other people's houses, it was like, you know, clean and organized and perfectly decorated. And I'm just like, I feel so good in here. I wish my own house was like this. And I was, I think n not a completely, definitely not a completely disorganized child, but like certain memories of realizing, for example, like the first time I bought a paper planner, which the generation I went through, they didn't force us to do that. And I was like keeping, I was like, oh, it just feels so good. I just like, it's so soothing just to see all these things. And so I didn't realize until later on, I am very visual. I really like having a lot of clear space. I like to see and organize plans and to-do lists and everything. I have to get it out of my head. Another thing that sticks out is when I was in high school, my mom was moving and she sort of like a DIY sort of just decluttering and staging. It wasn't anything super professional, but I remember remember begging her. I was like, when we move to your new house, can we keep it like this? Because it was just like, all of that stuff was gone. And I was like, mom, now it's perfect. <laughs> you know? And I also really had a, what I thought was a big passion for like actually decorating. And I never did go in that direction, but I just really always liked making environments feel good. So I think that's kind of where my interest came from. And then now I think like Melissa was saying over the years as an adult have just realized how much it is really doing for me calming anxiety. You know, I, I'm sure, I think you're going to get into this, Laurie, but I think actually, especially when my kids were a little bit younger than they are now, I think just organizing and getting rid of things was just the only productive thing I felt like I could do because every single day you're just trying to stay on top of chaos. And I was just like, oh, if I keep the chaos manageable, then I feel good. I'm not, a, not embarrassed to have people over to my house. And that's a three thing to even say that probably, but to me, it's like a non-negotiable. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I unfortunately am starting to realize that now I have a daughter who's rebelling against the way that I do things. And I'm like, okay, right. I'm like trying not to make it any worse, you know? Oh, I told the story before both of my <laughs> yeah. girls, when they were younger would be like, I'm going to grow up and be a hoarder like they to make you mad. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, you do you, but while you're here, you can't, you know, like I, I drew the line. I always allow my kids to have their room, their space be mm -hmm. messy until it got to a point. I was like, it cannot be gray gardens. Like uh, there's not going to be, we cannot have like feral animals in here because you've left bags of chips and milk and whatever, you know what I mean? Like, no, but I have given them that space. And I will say now having two girls in college, they both are like 
go, they're adapting more of my habits now that they're on their own and responsible for their spaces than when they lived here. And even when they come home for break, like again, they're back to their slobby teenage ways. Curious because I don't think there's a one size fits all. I do hundred percent agree with you, Melissa, in that you either adapt kind of the behavior that was modeled for you, or you say, yeah, I don't want that. And you go in a different direction. So I do think that there's so much of that that's truth. And so when I work with clients and I'm sure you do too, I've worked with people where they say, oh, I wish my kids would, you know, pick up their toys or make their bed or do this. And I look around the house and the rest of the house is in chaos. And I'm like, well, they're right. not being modeled that behavior. So it's hard enough to have buy-in when you are modeling that behavior. But if you are not modeling that as an adult, it's really hard. Absolutely. Well, I'm seeing a lot of clients now that acknowledge, like they acknowledge right away without me even having to dig into it. My mom did X and I see myself doing that. And I don't want to go down that same path. Like my mom never, ever gets rid of anything. And I see myself doing that too. And I want your help in trying to figure out how to dial that back. So I think that we're starting to get a little better about recognizing some of these behaviors and talking about them too. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. I want to talk about the different types of clutter and kind of what your Enneagram type has to do with that physical clutter, emotional clutter, calendar clutter. So a couple of things Jen mentioned before, when she was talking about the anxiety piece, and there's definitely an emotional response that certain Enneagram types from the people that I've spoken with have when they are surrounded by physical clutter and threes are one of them. Every three, including my husband, and I know Jen and I have personally spoken about this. There is a feeling of stress and anxiety when you are in a space. And I think ones, a lot of ones can relate to that as well, where you are around that space and it actually causes a, like a visceral reaction. Like I feel uncomfortable. I need to leave. Or I have a friend who's a one, she's, and she's a designer. And she's like, I get like short of breath. If I go into a house, that's like super cluttered. I feel like the walls are closing in. Can you just speak into that a little bit more? Oh, yes. I mean, that sounds like such a surface level observation, but it, it's very, very deep to me. And this is just me, me personally going into somebody's home for a short period of time, whether that's a family member or a client that in itself doesn't bother me because I'm not feeling like a sense of ownership of whatever is happening. And I'm like, I'll be leaving at <laughs> such and such a time. <laughs> so I don't experience it that way. I'm sure other people who are even more sensitive than I am probably do and would never think like, oh, let me go help somebody else organize their stuff. And I genuinely like in terms of helping, helping clients to me, it's like, Hey, this doesn't overwhelm me because I can envision the end result. And I know that you can't. So I know that I was using that some of those basic gifts at the time that I started my organizing business, which was all the way back in 2014 now, gosh, wait, 2013. I can't even, like I said, I can't remember the years anymore. 2014. Yes. And, and it was kind of like, oh, okay. I'm using my sort of low key OCD and my sort of decorative skills. And I'm like, I made a business out of it. I was like, how cool is that? What if I could help other people do that? And so for me, like realizing and connecting the pieces of I've got these skills. And if I just match myself up with some people who need that and want to pay for it and value it, then that's a business model. But what it comes down to though, is it gave me such, I got just as much satisfaction out of helping other people organize their stuff as I did organizing my own things and getting rid of things. That's really my favorite thing to do. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Mine too. Yeah. My, mine too. Um, yeah. But, but I want to back up though, because I recognize there's the business answer, which is we're talking about my professional experience and my skills. And then there's a personal level, what I experience with loved ones, with family, with people that I can't just leave whenever I want people that you live with. It's not easy to communicate to another person. Hey, I'm not just reacting because the room is a mess. It's like, if you came over to my house and I just blared loud music the whole time and I'm like, well, what's wrong? Can't you just chill out and enjoy yourself? That's how it feels when I'm in my own space. That's the level of 
what's the word I'm looking for? Sense, it's like a sensory perception. That's the level that I feel it. And it's not even because I think people are judging me. I think it is just, I'm seeing all of these things that I need to deal with and I can't, or I haven't yet. And it just really piles on me psychologically, emotionally. So it's not, I will say it doesn't, you know, it might've been a business that I could make, but it's not something that makes it very easy to be in a relationship with someone, for example, who doesn't feel that same way about the importance of environment. And listen, I know I've got a lifetime ahead of me that this is always going to be a thing because our houses are where we're living life. And, and it's, that's why I think it's so important what you're doing, Laurie, is it's not just about helping clients overcome it, but if we can just have these conversations with our families and just say like, Hey, I'm not attacking you. I'm just like letting you know, this makes a huge, huge difference to me and how I'm functioning every day. Absolutely. And I just want to say, because I have a client like Melissa, I have just a couple of clients to keep some skin in the game, but I have a client that I'd worked with for years before I learned the Enneagram. And I knew that, and they have four kids and I know that the husband's got a very bold personality and I like bold personality because I'm a direct person and the wife's a nine and he's a three. But I found that out later once I learned the Enneagram and I was like, did you ever do the Enneagram? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, what's your type? Cause you're not supposed to type people. And he's like, I'm a three. I'm like, I knew it. <laughs> and it was so true because he gets crazy. His response is very like, just throw everything away. Just get everything away. And she, and, and his wife, I say the nines for a lot of, for better, lack of a better word are clutter blind. Like they're so chill and go with the flow. They're the people that can walk past a sink full of dishes and it not stress them out, which in some ways they're less tightly wound than some of the mm-hmm. other types on the Enneagram. But you put that connection, somebody who's clutter blind and somebody who has this like nails on a chalkboard reaction when they see physical clutter out. And that causes relational conflicts. It's not about the laundry. It's not about the dishes. It's not about the papers. It's about, oh my gosh, this lack of control or this is stressing me out or all of these other things. And I think that the language is what is so helpful is understanding to be able to articulate it. Like you said, when you were a child, you didn't have the tools in your toolbox to articulate it. You just knew how you felt. And what I'm trying to do is help people have language so that they know, and then they can articulate it and also have some grace and empathy so that you could say, I get it, that this doesn't stress you out, but this is how I feel. Well, and we know from what we do that as professional organizers, you see a lot of relational relationship conflict. Like I say, I'm basically a marriage therapist, right? And a lot of that conflict comes from it's his fault. No, it's her fault. It's their fault. And you're, what you're saying is exactly right. Is sometimes that tension isn't resolved by explaining why it bothers you. It's just that I see this and I go to level 11 angry and we don't dial it back of it's not my fault that I feel this way. (laughs) It's just my brain telling me this is a stressful situation and I'm trying to get out of it, but it causes so many other problems. It causes problems with your kids. It causes problems with your spouse. It causes problems with so many other things because you're exactly right. We don't use the right words to describe why it's bothering us. Okay. Thanks for listening to part one of our conversation with Laurie Palau. On our next episode, we are going to have a bunch more conversation, including how we all view our own types of clutter, the three types of clutter, physical, emotional, and calendar clutter. So you're going to get some inside scoop about the things, especially that Jen and I struggle with in terms of those three kinds of clutter, and then what we're really good at containing. This is this next part will have a bunch of things that I think are helpful as you think about personality types and how you can work with clients in different ways. So we look forward to chatting with you. And again, please hit us up for our free workshop at poroadmap.com. Have an awesome day, everybody. Thank you so much for listening in to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. If you'd like to get our roadmap for success as a pro organizer, head straight to www.poroadmap.com.